the broader context of a nine months resource project, this kind of mental long longitudinal training study, um, we have like three modules. And the first module is much more this kind of presence-based, attention-based mindfulness module. And there people are just focusing internally on, on objects, but they do it alone. Uh, but the, the other two modules, which are one called affect and is a compassion based module and the other is perspective is a more you know uh, metacognitive module um, they we call them intersubjective because they focus about the relationship between me and the other when we designed this um, module obviously there were these classical meditation like loving kindness meditation meta meditation which are very well known in the west and are also implemented already a lot uh, as a daily practice in you know eight week compassion based practices but we also developed another core exercise we call we call the contemplative diet and the contemplative diet is a meditation done together and so you're sitting uh, with uh, you know facing the other and looking into the eyes and then you are almost meditating loudly together so one person is is asking you a certain question which you you should you know contem contemplate like reflect on um, and the other person is reflecting on and then you change roles. It is not a normal dialogue. The other one is practicing empathic listening, is not allowed to interrupt and the one who is who is talking and answering a, a specific question like for example tell me a difficult situation of the last 24 hours and how it felt in your body. So this would be a mindfulness on difficult emotion and how to accept it. That's just one example. The diets can have different questions. And uh, what, it, what it does is that we also change every week the person. And so after three months, you will have encountered uh, many different dialogue partners in this very intimate way in the middle of your day. And so you, you start learning to contemplate how you feel in your day in a very intimate manner with someone else listening to you. So what it does, it is creating intersubjectivity, but it also allows you to, to cultivate intersubjective skills like empathic listening, theory of mind, perspective taking on the other, um, uh, you know, like how to accept difficult emotion and not to feel judged by the other, like non-judgmental listening, you know, qualities which are all important, you know, to reduce social stress, to develop compassion, uh, non-judgmental awareness and so on but you do it with another being and it is very, very um, different than when you do it alone by imagining some person which is not there. You know, in an analytical meditation, very often your mind wanders somewhere else if you're not very trained, uh, you know, with shamatha practice and attention practice. So when we develop this uh, resource project, I said it would be really important to include real other people in your practice to really develop these intersubjective skills and these really this kind of reality of interconnectedness and not just imagined interconnectedness which is much more difficult I think for our western mind uh, to connect with and a lot of people actually report that the meta practice the classic loving kindness where you have to imagine people is very difficult for them and some, some cannot do it uh, because either they don't know anybody who is loving or you know but if there is a real other person you know who is part of your group you, you just have this other person in its real reality there and so you practice in your daily life with real person and that's what we want to cultivate. We want to cu cultivate compassion for real person, for people you meet in the street. <laughs> uh, it's not typically something you do in classical Buddhist um, uh, lineages. Although sometimes people said, you know, that some teacher also deviate and say, do a meta practice with another person. So, it's not classical, you know, but uh, on the other hand, in, in, in psychotherapy, in the Western psychotherapeutic traditions, you have a lot of these dyadic practices, but not in the way we did it, because we really did it in a very Zen-like contemplative way. Um, so it's not a role play or something like that. It's really a, a meditation together. We have a one paper out now in Yama Psychiatry which introduces the affect and perspective diets as tools and what we can show we ask them before and after they do these 10 minutes diets every day you know with these kind of uh, task which is self and other circle and you have to say how much how close do you feel to the other and 
this is the self and that the other. And then with the slider, you can say like this, this would be a complete melting of self and other. This would be like, you know, I'm really completely separate from the other. This would be like, I'm rather close, you know. And so you can measure the perceived closeness in very fast way. They just, you know, use a slider. And so we could measure over time of the practices how close they feel before they start the diet how close they feel to the other after having done the diet with this person and how close over time they feel the they feel at the beginning of a diet even though they have not done the diet yet with the other and what we show is that both that all the diets we implemented always make you feel closer to the other so before and after you do it on the day, you always feel closer to the other. It's a big effect. But what is even more interesting is that over the weeks, you even feel already closer at the beginning of a diet to a person, even if you are coupled with a new person, not the same person you did you know, the whole week with. So meaning that there is something which generalizes that you already feel closer to whatever human is coupled with you uh, before you even do the practice. So there is something which is increasing, I think, a generalized feeling of social connectedness, intersubjectivity, and common ground through this kind of daily dietic practice. In the resource project, we measured 90 different measures, but we ca on that measures, we can't really disentangle what is a diet and what is the meta practice, because they always did two core practice for each module. So, so, uh, so we know, you know, we can, we can, so for example, we have huge uh, reduction of social stress after this affect and perspective diet, but not the mindfulness one. And so we can, conc we can suggest that this is probably the intersubjective dietic nature of these modules, which reduce social stress uh, because the presence module doesn't have them. There you are alone, you know, uh, but social stress on the hormonal level doesn't get reduced after three months of classical mindfulness practice, only when these intersubjective modules kick in. So I think there is a generalized um, a feeling of interconnectedness and openness to the world and weeness which is developing through these diets over time.